The tournament of the year is coming up in June, Candidates 2022, which will decide the challenger to world champion Magnus Carlsen. So I'm taking a look at the players which will be partaking in the tournament. And in this video, we're looking at the really exciting 26 year old player from Hungary, Richard Rapport. So Richard qualified by coming second in the FIDE Grand Prix. He's in the form of his life right now. He's 2776 on the latest FIDE ratings list, which is his peak ever rating. And so really a dark horse going into this tournament. You know, he beat out Levon Aronian, Wesley So to qualify for this candidates. So he's playing some awesome chess but he's a very quirky and interesting player as well. He really plays some offbeat stuff, and we see a great example of that in this game against Dmitry Andrekin, the strong Russian GM playing with the black pieces here. So let's see what happened. Game details below. Richard kicks off with pawn to d4, and we had d5, pawn c4, e6, knight c3, all very normal, and then pawn a6 was played by Dimitri. So this is kind of trendy right now. It's an offbeat line. The idea here is that black will take on c4 if allowed, and then play a quick b5 supporting that pawn. And in response to this, white very often captures. That's what Richard does, so you don't allow that captures on c4. The pawn recaptured, and now here we go offbeat. Pawn a3 from Rapport. So this is what I mean about his quirky style. So it's kind of a waiting move. I mean, the computer sees this and doesn't love it, of course, wants to develop a piece. But black here then has to find a response. I mean, say you go knight f6, then probably bishop g5 coming. This is maybe part of the point. And so in response to this, Dimitri goes pawn h6. So okay, super GMs, they're just doing what they want at times, breaking the opening rules. And now bishop f4 is played, developing a piece before you go pawn e3. So knight f6 from Dimitri, now pawn e3, pawn c5, a very principled break at the center. And now once again, we're going off b, having some fun, bishop e5. What is this all about? I mean, you're moving the same piece twice in the opening, a big no-no in opening principles. Well, we're getting a dynamic imbalanced position is kind of what we're heading towards. Non-standard, really. I mean, it puts some pressure on the knight, of course. Then maybe d5 will be slightly weaker. But okay, very weird move. We had bishop e6 in response, adding some support to the d5 pawn. And now the knight did develop into the game. It might look weird coming to e2, not to the natural f3 square. But we'll see Rapport's idea in a moment. So after knight c6, he goes knight to f4, pressuring this bishop, also d5. He'll look to pick that up in the future. Now black doesn't want to be taking here. Then the pawn recaptures. You're kicking this knight. There's too much pressure in the center here. White's doing really well. So instead of captures on e5, Dimitri correctly takes here. And now the bishop recaptured. This is the best move because after knight takes, queen takes, yes, black has picked up the bishop pair, but white has the better pawn structure playing against that isolated queen's pawn. So Richard's got that imbalanced position which he was probably looking for, but black's fine out of the opening, of course. Bishop pair, no development issues. So bishop d6 played, pawn g3, another logical move, because very often this bishop wants to come to g2 or h3, looking in these directions here. And rook to c8 now from Dimitri. So he delays castling his king. You know, what's white going to do next? Does the bishop want to be on g2, h3? As soon as you leave the protection of the c4 square, will black then swing a rook in immediately, kick your queen? So there's some cat and mouse going on here, and that's why rapport goes rook to d1, delays the development of the f1 bishop, and now there's pressure against d5, which black has to deal with. And the most obvious way to do this is with bishop takes on f4. Then there's options here you could take with queen. You can even take like this if you really want to start imbalancing the position. The rook could come to the g-file, this kind of thing. But black didn't actually take on f4. Instead, queen a5 was played, a really interesting move from Dimitri. So he's pinning this knight to the king. That's how he's dealing with the pressure on d5. 
and he's asking White to make an uncomfortable decision. Where do you actually want to put this bishop? Do you want to take on e6? Maybe the best move, then bishop h3, but king f7 can come. You know, it's not easy for White to actually decide how to proceed, and Rapport actually plays a bit meekly here. He goes rook to c1, probably taking on e6 was best there. So he does cover that knight, gets out of any tactical ideas with the pressure coming against c3, but now he's lost the tempo there, black has fully equalised. So castles from Dimitri, knight takes on e6 now, the pawn recaptured, now the bishop comes to h3, and best here was probably rook e8, but both players are playing with a fighting spirit here, we had king to f7 instead. So it holds that pawn with the king, and therefore allows this rook to come into the game like this, and then the other one wants to double behind it. This is Dimitri's idea. So castles from white. Now the rook came to c4, queen d3, and now bishop e5 was played. An excellent move, slicing across that long diagonal, pressuring those dark squares. So the knight dropped back into e2 here. A really nice re-maneuver from Rapport. He's looking to come to f4 in the future, pressure e6, but he does leave a pawn on prees. Now, if black takes immediately, this is simply no good because we have this one, you're pressuring e6, really good for white. And if black decides to take on c1 first, rook recaptures, then take on b2, well, rook b1 is the idea. I mean, black can even win a second pawn here, but then say queen c2, you have to move the bishop, you're taking on b7, it's just a nice attack for white, the knight's also coming to f4, quite a nice initiative. So here, Dimitri correctly didn't take that pawn on b2, instead he just doubled his rooks on the c file, and now we had this exchange on c4. Now the rook recaptured, if you go with the pawn, then the queen can simply slide back, Yes, black can get b5, looks scary, but f4 gives great counterplay. After the bishop gives ground, knight d4, white's getting quite a nice initiative, this pawn looks weak. So we didn't have this takes with c4. Instead, the rook recaptured here, keeping that rook on the file, and now Rapport does do something about his b2 pawn. He plays b4 here kicks the queen, but it finds this really nice square on a4, looking at c2, also looking to slide back to c6, pleasant options for Dimitri. So Rapport now goes knight f4, he wants to bring that one into the game, he's pressuring e6, this is next to impossible to cope with, if you start going rook c3 for example, well the queen can come to g6, or there's tactics with takes here, so you have to chop that knight off, you just can't live with it. The pawn recaptures, now this queen came back to c6, nice battery on the c-file, and queen e3 played, looking at the e6 pawn. And there's a tactic here now, a trap. So if you go rook to c3, can you see the best move for white here to punish black's move? And if you're enjoying this video, do hit that like button, let me know, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So if black had gone rook c3, then you can take here with the bishop, and the queen is overloaded. So if you take back, we pick up the rook, and if you move king f8, well we can just go queen e5, we won a clean pawn, nice position for white. So okay, Dimitri didn't go rook c3, he spotted that one. He went knight e4 instead, great move, centralizing the knight, and now Rapport could just wait here with kind of bishop g4 or rook e1, solid looking moves, but he goes pawn f3. He's willing to fight, and that's what we love about him at the moment. So the knight is kicked, but first the rook picks up a tempo on the queen. It came into d4 here, and now Dimitri comes back. The queen comes back. The rook comes back. So Dimitri's looking for this draw. Their first classical game was drawn, by the way. This is the final of the Fide Grand Prix in Belgrade. So if this one's drawn, they'll go to tie breaks. But what does Rapport do here? He goes queen to e5. A really fighting decision, especially because he only has a couple minutes left on the clock and still 10 moves to make before time control. So queen e5 played, but it allows knight to d2, forking rook forking this pawn if the rook came to the e-file. What's Rapport's follow-up? Well, he goes pawn f5 here. 
He gives a whole exchange on f1. That was taken, it is the best move, but then he takes here with check. This is the follow-up and it looks really scary for black. Now there's only one move in this position to actually keep things level and it was the counterintuitive king to e7. And I say counterintuitive because it allows queen takes on g7 with check. But the idea of coming to e7 is that you can then come to d6. Now it looks like this should be losing after queen to f8 check. Then the king moves, then e7, the pawn should be going through, but this is the trick, queen b6 check. We see this stuff in the game, but the difference here is that the queen is on f8 for white. If the queen is on g7, then it covers this diagonal. And why that's important is that if the king picks up the knight here, if you go king h1, by the way, the knight just takes on g3 with check, you get similar stuff. The rook can then check, and yes, the king can move away. Looks like you're actually getting mated, but you're not. The best way for black to play is give up the rook, king captures, but the queen comes in, you start checking. White can't actually avoid these checks. This is the point. But where it was so different in the game is the king came to e8 here, not to e7. And now when we get the same line of takes on g7, queen b6 check, king takes on f1, we get this same stuff going on, rook c1 check, king e2. Now queen b5 check was the line I looked at just a moment ago. Instead, Dimitri goes rook e1 check, but the ideas are the same. You give the rook, you bring the queen in, you start checking, but what we'll see here is that although the black queen starts giving this king the runaround, it actually comes all the way over to the queen side here, and soon we'll see that it finds a home on a2. And the big problem is that once you reach a2, as it does now, you can't actually check from c2 or simply the queen comes back and blocks. Yes, you go c4 check, king b1, queen d3, but queen c2, and now there's no more checks. If you take on a3, we're coming down here, we're giving mate in a few moves. So none of this stuff was working if you check from the second rank. So Dimitri went queen c4 check, king b2, now queen e2 check, king a1, and here Dimitri is good as resigned. Again, if he starts with queen d1 stuff, we just go like this. So in this position after king a1, he went queen f1 check for a bit of a joke, gives the queen, and here Dimitri resigned. So watch out for rapport, a bit of a dark horse in the form of his life. If you enjoyed this video, then click here to see my Hikaru video candidates preview. Thanks for watching, see you soon.